The traditional Gullah Geechee speaking population resides on the barrier islands and lowlands along the Atlantic coast states of North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Surviving amongst the Gullah Geechee population are deep rooted traditions connecting them to the sea and their African ancestry. The Gullah Geechee people, through language and culture, trace their ancestry back to the West African countries of Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone, where rice had been cultivated for over 3,000 years. But, an irony of horrendous misfortune, it was their agricultural expertise at rice farming that made Africans in this coastal region of the continent prime targets for kidnapping, chained and shipped to the American colonies to become slaves. The Africans cleared over 50,000 acres of swamp and marsh, dug hundreds of miles of canals through gators, poisonous snakes, and swarms of malaria and yellow fever carrying mosquitoes. Being that rice wasn't a native plant of the Americas, it was the cultivation techniques brought by the Africans, from tidal irrigation to hill spike, that made rice the most profitable crop, as rice became known as Carolina gold. By the War of Independence in 1776, the knowledge and labor of the African rice farmers had made the Carolina planters and slave owners the wealthiest men in the American colonies. Only tobacco was a greater agricultural export, and cotton was yet to become a major commodity. The Civil War witnessed Gullah-speaking Sea Islanders lining up to farm as a fighting force for their freedom. First known as contraband or contras, the Gullah were formed into the first South Carolina infantry of African descent and were incorporated into the Union Army in 1863. They were eventually used to occupy the city of Jacksonville, Florida. Sea Islanders were the first slaves free in the Confederate state. The Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, as established by Congress in 2006, extends along the coastline 500 miles from Wilmington, North Carolina to Jacksonville, Florida. The region plays host to numerous Gullah festivals, including those in Charleston, St. Helena, Buford, Savannah, Burnswick, St. Simons Island, and Jacksonville. The Gullah language is an English Creole dialect based on African grammar, structure, and cadence with some African words and phrases inclusive. For years, centuries of isolation on the islands and lowlands, the Gullah maintain more of their African linguistic and cultural heritage than any other African American community. We visited the Gullah Festival on St. Simon's Island where tribute and song and music was paid to greatness covering the artistry of Etta James, J.J. Johnson, Whitney Houston, Sarah Vaughn, Marian Anderson, Jesse Norman, and Nancy Wilson.
Gullah traditions, including cuisine, music, folk beliefs, handcrafts, farming and fishing, and storytelling, all exhibit strong influences of West African culture. Attending storytelling artists celebrated their craft with tales of a clever bear rabbit who tricks the master to Ebo's landing. That they had kidnapped, and he told his people that we're gonna walk out into the ocean, and we're gonna drown ourselves, and uh, we're gonna, our souls are gonna fly back to Africa. So when they got to Dunbar Creek, before the plantation owners, or the captain of the ship, knew what was happening, they stepped out into the ocean. And before they could stop them, a number of the slaves had drowned themselves. So they changed it from Dunbar Creek to Ebo's Landing. So right now, there's a place on St. Simon Island that's called Ebo's Landing. And I'm told that if you walk across Causeway, St. Simon Causeway, at a certain time of the year, you can hear the clang of the slaves chained as they walked out into that ocean. Now, this is The drum is forbidden, so they beat the stick. Africans then. We are Africans now. We celebrate the people of yesterday. Sing their praises today. Gift their memories and deeds tomorrow to the next generation. The Gullah handcraft of basket weaving, baskets said to be woven so tight they can carry water, was brought to the Sea Islands from West Africa, and today the craft is still practiced on both sides of the ocean. rice and a rich bounty from the sea are as well enjoyed on both sides of the ocean divide. The Supreme Court's 1896 Plessy v. Ferguson decision made racial segregation the law of the land. Brothers James Weldon and John Rosman Johnson, both raised and schooled in Jacksonville, Florida, in 1899 would write the libretto of music to one of America's most powerful and enduring treasures. Rooted deep in tradition, the tune spread from the Gullah Geechee region to every African American community across the land, inspiring hope as it speaks of the roaring sea.
This is Griot Historian Jamal Okeo Jamal.